So I found this video a few nights ago. I had to do a lot of digging on YouTube to get this one. This is Noni's first uh, Courage tournament in Korea. Courage was a tournament you had to play in in order to get a pro gaming license. So you couldn't just, um, for lack of better words, be good, be on a pro team. Thank you for the subs, Gauntlet Wizard. I really appreciate it. You couldn't just be good enough to be on a pro team and they could send you out. Because uh, this was regulated by KESPA, which um, you know was a, a kind of a branch of the government, you had to have a license to compete and so anybody that wanted to um, you know, be on the big stage with an OSL. Yo, Pig, thank you so much for the raid, man. Welcome, viewers. Just doing a little bit of StarCraft 1 history here. So back then, anybody that wanted to do um, uh, uh, competing in an, an, uh, an OSL or an MSL or Pro League, you had to get this license first. And as StarCraft became more and more popular, uh, it became harder and harder to get this license. It was a 64-man tournament. It was eventually a, uh, what, a 128-man tournament you had to win uh, in order to to just get the license so that you could then um, compete on TV on a pro team. You could still be in a pro team house and practice and try to earn this thing, um, but it was a really brutal tournament. Uh, obviously, now they don't have anything like that. Kespa has a very different role in the country. Um, Kespa now, it's like a small office. Uh, they do things like actually renew my visa in Korea. Um, but uh, at the time, they were a much bigger governing body that had uh, a lot of power. And this was the kind of bureaucratic system you had to go through in order to get that. This is about, by the way, two years before StarCraft II dropped, I think. I think I'd been in Korea for about a year. Um, anyways, this is Noni. I'll let the video play for a second here, and then I'll start to add some more commentary. So Noni, where are we going? Going to Courage. Ooh, exciting. And who's this that's in your group? Hi. Say hi to the camera. Another Eastro player going to Courage. They are in the same group. So this is the Eastro van. Every team had a van or something close to a bus uh, that you would traffic players around in. Um, yeah. Can we go to the Eastro van? <laughs> so Noni. Yeah, Noni. How do you feel about your chances today? Well, I do have a fellow Eastro player in my group, so it's a little bit tough. But uh, I feel pretty good about this first courage. This is going to be one of the last Courages with 64-man groups. Does that put any extra pressure on you here today? Yeah, man. The 128 is going to be a lot harder. So uh, it would be nice to snag it at 64. So I'll be thinking about that a little bit. Let's see. You have uh, every build order on every map against every race planned out already? Or are you going to freestyle it all? Well... Uh, yeah, chat. This is Artosis interviewing him. Sorry, I didn't clarify. I pretty much, I'm gonna freestyle it, but I do know so many builds. Like I, I could have picked one build for every map and matchup, but uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be like water. Oh, like water. Yeah. Oh, what kind of water? <laughs> oh, like water. Yeah, what kind of water? <laughs> oh, there are many kind of mineral water. water. <laughs> mineral water. water. <laughs> I'm gonna be some nice Drinking clean. Water. Clean water, Clean fresh water. water. Not Korean tap water? Yeah, not Korean tap water. That's good. That's water, 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 water. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is, uh, I'm sure you guys already, most of you know, but this is Noni um, being brought to Courage. Uh, Artosis and I had been in Korea for a little while. I think I was a couple months ahead of him. I got out a little bit earlier. Um, got out to Korea a little bit earlier. And um, he was... I would say it's fair um, fair to say he's probably the best American player at that time. Eastro did a good job recruiting this guy. 
And this tournament is so important because if you get through, you're effectively in the pro gaming apparatus. You're able to compete. You're much more, um, I mean, you can be marketable now because you're actually going to be on Korean TV. Uh, you're going to be in the big matches where, where uh, you know, the big casted games are, where the prize money is. Um, and since the, um, uh, the, the, the push to have the, the programming license, um, again, it was this big divide between that. Those who managed to escape through this tournament and then get to play in the big leagues and the people that would just get shut out. Might skip ahead here just a little bit. Sangtek, why? So, this is at the um, this is at the I Park Mall. This is a mall in the center of Seoul, just north of the Han River. Um, I believe it's where uh, the OSL was for most of its time there, or at least on GameNet had a big studio there. I know it was used for other stuff later, like Heroes of the Storm had some events out of there as well. Um, but there was also a designated um, qualifier area. I think it was maybe three big rooms of just, it, it would look almost like a computer lab at a, a high school or a university, just lined with computers in there. But it was used to run these kinds of tournaments. It was also by a train station. Um, you could actually connect to the train right, uh, like a, a, when I say a train station, I don't, I don't mean just the normal subway system in, in Seoul which you could also connect to this area with. But I mean, you could take a train from uh, Busan, for instance, directly up here, get off the train, go right upstairs into the mall and compete. So it was a great hub for the whole country um, where, you're, where you could uh, get in easily. By the way, Korea has a great train system. You can get around very easily, very cheaply with it. Um, so anybody from anywhere in the country could get in, come here, compete, and even go back home if they were done for the day. They didn't even have to get a hotel. Whoops. <laughs> So all these people are waiting outside for these doors to open. I think you had to sign up online. I don't think you could sign up in person. And I think initially they only let, why is my space bar not pausing this? Initially, yeah, my space bar just isn't working. Um, you, they would only let the players into setup initially. And then people that were gonna coverage it, uh, c cover it would, would go in a little bit later. That is the courage room. Currently, I am going to pick up Tasis right now, who's come down to give some support to Noni. This is Yongsan, the place that OSL games are played, and this is the train station below it. That is actually where Courage takes place, where all the offline trials for uh, everything from GOM to NBC to OGN leagues are played. Let's cut to Tasis here. Here I am. <laughs> How's Thailand? Good to see you. How are you doing? Is this like some kind of family? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That is. It's actually what we do every single time. Yeah, we, yeah. we give hugs. <laughs> oh man, how long have you been here? Ten minutes. Ten minutes. A lot of people. Huh? Yep. All of their legs running around. Tasteless, do you have any uh, tips for Noni? Because I know you've played Courage before, he hasn't. Uh, um... Yeah, I played Courage, I think, two times. Sorry, I saw somebody in the chat asking earlier. Um, I played in Courage two times. The very first time I did it, we were filmed by a documentary team. Um, and I remember being, like, so distracted and nervous. Uh, I was already, like, a player that would just be so nervous in any tournament anyways. And then just having, like, cameras in your face like I'm, i played horribly too i remember like i i think i uh like lost my shuttle to a bunch of mutilists because it, it was just like a really bad experience uh got eliminated right away i remember just being oh it was horrible uh the second time i played in courage it was a lot more relaxed because i just opted to do it um just with artosis without cameras everywhere um but yeah i've played in it before it's pretty nerve-wracking 
Um, it's also just a really daunting thing. Almost all the players you're going up against, you don't know who's who's who. You have to register with your actual name, not your ID. So unless you know people's, um, you know, Korean names, even for me when I was playing as an American in America, I didn't know any of the other guys' actual names. I knew their their IDs. Um, so anyways, you'd have to get through a 64 or 128 person bracket. Uh, it was tough. I don't know. It's really weird. Just, just play like you're on iCup. You know what I mean? Like you're yeah, not going to know yeah. who you're playing in here and stuff. And yeah. Yeah. Don't psych yourself out. Nobody's there. nobody's gonna be watching you. Yeah, Except yeah. for maybe a ref, and he probably won't know the game that well. So, yeah. no pressure really. I don't even think you're allowed to say three. So, it's gonna be fine. All right, I want predictions. How far is he gonna get? By the way, this is just this is not exactly related to like Noni and Courage or anything like that. God, we sound different when we talk now. I guess doing all these broadcasts with our you know for because Artosis has this real Boston accent he sounds like he's in goodwill hunting and i mean it's clear my speech patterns have changed from like this younger version of me like i think i just speak way more clearly i also didn't know how to project my voice whether i was casting uh or just talking normally like i didn't speak through my diaphragm so i kind of sounded like this i had like more of a kind of nasally voice um but yeah it's it's crazy that over this much time it's like we've totally cleaned up our speech patterns and by the way without ever like telling each other like i never was telling artosis you gotta you know clean up the accent i didn't even really notice he had much of an accent but looking back at it now it's so so crazy at a minimum well i don't know what, what do you think actually i mean you know you know what i'm supposed to say which is yeah. like i think he's gonna get first place but yeah you oh, enjoy it oh maybe yeah maybe check in Let's see if i can cut ahead here I'm you. I me you. <laughs> I I me. I I me you. Yes. <laughs> we have just met. <laughs> I'm trying to get to a place where we're talking to Noni. Hold on a second here. So this, I don't believe the matches had actually started yet, but they let everybody kind of warm up. Obviously, it's a different time period. We have these giant monitors that now only exist for stuff like smash melee um but you know monitors with the big backs not space efficient um and yeah i mean this is noni getting ready We caught you uh, going to the bathroom here. Yep. How are you doing so far? 2-0, uh, 2-1 for the first two rounds. I'm in round of 16 now. Round of 16 on your first try. You're yes. as good as our toe. Oh, my God. Okay, I'm still remember this. We weren't allowed to be in there. I remember this was this weird moment we were down there, and they, like, wouldn't let us come in, and we were like, what? We were nobody back then, by the way. We were, like, I mean, as far as they were concerned, like, tourists or something like that. Yo, thank you for the five bucks. I appreciate that. Um... Uh, thank you so much for the support. There's other English casters uploading ASL commentary right away, but not us. Uh, we we edit ours over a day or two, but anybody can cast ASL. So if you want to get our casting, you got to wait a day or two. Um, but yeah, I remember when we were filming this, we were kind of like surprised we wouldn't get in. There was like no concept of like um, helping out journalists or, or, or influencers or, or anything like that. It was just, we were sort of a nuisance. We do eventually get, I think, into a corner where we get to spec uh, on a PC and have to sit there very quietly. Closest it leaves, that means. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. wow, wow, wow. Uh, so tell us about uh, your last match. You just had 2-1, must have been hard. Yeah, first game was Destination. I did uh, two gate ops, but I kept my pro uh, live long enough in his base to see him take uh, SCVs off gas. So I expanded kind of quickly, but he actually was doing a dropship build. And I had like the perfect counter because the two gate ops repelled the dropship without losing any probes. And I had a pretty fast next. He tried to play harass and shit for the rest of the game, but I shut it down and just overwhelmed him. Second game was Medusa, and I did uh, 15, or 13 gate, 50, or 10 gate, 15 gate, right? Yeah, and uh, he did two facts, and he beat me because I realized he was doing two facts too late, so it overwhelmed me. And then 
third game was Coliseum, and he did uh, Marine SUV rush all in. Was the racks in the center of the map? It wasn't even in the center. Wow. No. And I scouted the center, too, so if he had done that, it would have been even worse. What a huge nerd. Yeah, so... For, and the first <laughs> round was pretty easy. The guy wasn't too good. He was a Terran, too. And I just played standard and beat him, so... Right, how are you feeling? I heard that there's almost no Zergs in your group. Kwani was looking yeah, yeah, at... Yeah. Uh, I actually have a Zerg right now. Oh, you have a Zerg next. I, oh. hear, I hear he's an all-in Zerg, which I guess is every Zerg. Wow. So, uh, I'm gonna, it's a little change of pace from PBT, playing an all-in Zerg, so... Cannons and right. Corsairs? Yeah, it, I'm gonna build a lot of cannons and shit. <laughs> uh, if you beat him, you'll be up against your Eastro teammate in the round of eight. What do you oh, think right, about really that? Yeah. That I'll tell you what I think. I think that absolutely sucks, and I wish Kespa could have changed it, but I guess they couldn't. So, uh, well, you know, we've we've had some good practice games, and uh, I can beat him. He can beat me. So, we'll just all right, another match. Excellent. Well, good luck in your next match. All right. Good luck, man. Scurries off. All right, so uh, tell us what's going on with Noni here, Tasteless. Um, he's in the final 16, and he's 1-1 one one right now against um, apparently a really good Zerg, so we're going to try to sneak in. Let's and, go uh, see how he's see. doing in game yeah. three. Call us see him. Let's do that. Be quiet. Be quiet when we go in. <laughs> yeah. Don't want to get kicked Don't out. Don't talk in that loud voice. <laughs> yeah. Just... Our loud commentator voices have to go away now. Our commentator voices. I think we've been kicked out of here two or three times already. So, yeah, obviously, because it's a 64-person bracket, the further you get along, the more the room clears out. Uh, so I think we were able to get in at this point in time because, you know, it was half empty, so there was room for people to stand around. Jesus, Artos, it's like the fucking Blair Witch Project. Let's give this guy some magnesium. This camera is so shaky. so funny he's talking about how it was a cheesy zerg he's got cannons now covering both bases going corsairs the meta was a little bit different back then i think people have really sharpened the early game a bit more what year is this this would be starcraft 2 is 13 years old so this is probably 15 years old this is before starcraft 2 all of us kind of waiting for starcraft 2 to come out guessing there's probably going to be opportunities there That's his opponent's perspective here. Oh, my God. Oh, wow, there's a big counterattack. Yo, Dave Tessa, thank you for the raid, man. We're just going through some old history here. Welcome, viewers. This is Noni at uh, Courage Tournament 15 years ago. I can't remember if this was top four of the tournament. Basically, Noni was actually winning. He was slowly moving through. Noni was able to slowly move through the bracket. Sorry, I'm trying to be quiet when people in the video are talking. This was round of 16, I think so, or round of eight. So maybe, yeah, I guess not round of four then. Let's see if we 
Oh, is there something that's going on? No? Noni had nerves of steel during this. Yeah, he, I think he was more built for competition. Crazy game here. So basically, Zerg just has the bottom right. He lost his main in the bottom left, but usually when the Zerg loses the main, it's sometimes almost worse than if the Protoss does, if they're both happen at the same time. Because if the Protoss has Storm and kind of like, you know, Dragoon, Archon, Zealot, you know, the kind of core unit composition, usually you can kind of win more fights over time. Does Noni still play? I think he was playing Stormgate. I don't know if he's been playing StarCraft 1 or 2. So he wins that, by the way. Exciting moment. All right. We just watched an elimination race. You were down to just uh, your third base. Right. And he had lurkers, and you were yeah. losing observers. Third game. And this is the third game. Oh, yeah. This was absolutely wild. What do you think? What are your thoughts on that game? Oh, that, that it was pretty intense. I was kind of mad because, like, I figured he was going to go Muta like he did. And I was like, all right, my build covers it. And then he ended up killing my natural <laughs> with the Mutas. And I was like, all right, but it's not so bad because, like, he did such a fast Muta. It was really low <laughs> econ. So I thought if I played defensively, then I could just crawl back into the game and do, uh, uh, what's it called, a hand bang, hand bang, rush, just uh, timing all in. Yeah. And that's what I did. It's really good for Coliseum, I think. So I got a shitload of Storm, and I just uh, moved on out. And then he did a drop at the same time. So it turned into an elimination race. That, and, uh, that was intense. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, that guy was quite good. I mean, yeah, yeah, he was pretty good. The enemy yeah. His, his scourge him. splits were awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really Did you oh, yeah. think you were going to lose it all during that elimination race? Oh, well, I wasn't sure how much he had at bottom right. And it's like if he had like a couple of sunks and a couple of lurks at bottom right, then it was going to be really close. Because I still had a base and I still had a lot larger army, so the game would have stretched on, but I was pretty confident. I knew my army was a lot stronger than his. So. Right, and uh, the Eastro guy that you were supposed to fight in the round of eight died to a Terran. Yeah, so yeah. you will now be playing a really good Terran that kills Eastro members. <laughs> what yeah, do you man. think? PBT, uh, it's a tough matchup for me, but, you know, I made it this far. I already owned yeah. a couple Terrans. So. Speaking of which, you're in the top eight now. I yeah. think that's probably the best the Foreigner's ever I mean, done in their first try. That means he might be better than Artosis. Yeah. Wow. There's I think a he might possibility be. that he's better than Artosis. Wow. Yeah. Slight. <laughs> wow. All right, yeah. So, uh, I'm feeling pretty good. So I'm playing well, so uh, let's see how this game goes. All right, good yeah, luck. This was so far a remarkable run to get top eight. Almost everybody was dying, like, within one or two rounds of Courage. I think the nerves kick in. Yeah, we talk about this a little bit with uh, with GSL, where, like, you get these players that play, you know, they've literally played in, like, you know, 20, 30 GSLs, and they're kind of used to the whole scene. And then you get some of these newer players, obviously not new in competitive StarCraft II in general, but they haven't played in many GSLs, and they don't seem to perform as well. I know in my experience in talking to a lot of the other guys, when you finally get to play in Courage, it's so like, ah, it's, you know, you're finally at this moment uh, that you've wanted, you've dreamed of playing in for so many, you know, uh, in this case, over a decade for how old the game was, uh, that you tend to not, you know, the, the nerves get the best of you. So Noni was having an incredible run at this moment. Thank you very much. He typed up. So he won that one. So Noni, you're pretty good. You're in the, uh, what is this now? This is the top four. Yeah, this is top four now. Top four, man. Jesus.
this is where it's starting to get kind of crazy. This is no longer where it's just yeah. like, okay, we're having fun. Let's go and film Noni and hang out, and we'll go get some barbecue afterwards. It's like, oh, shit, he might actually go the whole way. Like, we might be seeing history get made here. <laughs> faces they're looking at me like oh shit he's still here what? yeah so funny. you are now in the you got to keep in mind that at that time especially there had not been any real foreigners competing in starcraft one in a long time it was like there was a period where you had um you know like elky and legionnaire rack rolled smuffed all those guys were there was a period that was very early on and, and they had departed from starcraft for a while and then there was sort of this like uh i guess dark ages for foreigners um for lack of a better word, where there just wasn't any foreigner presence. So it was like, oh my God, is this going to be a moment where, you know, we get a guy who's going to get this license and go on? Top four. I am in the top That four. is absolutely ludicrous. That what guy... the fuck is your problem? <laughs> you were so good, man. That round was, was pretty easy. Actually. Yeah, that you destroyed this I don't know year. how he beat uh, Dongo, because Dongo is, is really good. I watched him play. That's my teammate, in case uh, you in the video can't. You know, you, you have less than five brain cells, but uh, he beat wow. my teammate, and then I played him, and uh, I don't you know. destroyed he, him. You he, went 10 15 up, yeah. gate on Medusa and just sniper that tank. Yeah, I sniped the tank. This was the, the 10 15 gate that keeps being talked about in this. There was this new build order where you just didn't get a dragoon right away, and you got dragoon range and a second gateway, and then you made your dragoons. And on a lot of these maps where there wasn't a high ground, you could just run up and kill the depot or kill the tank, shoot over the, the depot and just get in and, and win the game. It was like a super good rush. And it was very, now I think it's actually not as strong of a build. I mess with it when I am laddering. Um, but uh, yeah, at the time it was like a super strong build where you could just kind of break the Terran before the game started. Spreadoss isn't really fair, but you did good anyways. <laughs> <laughs> I was more proud of the first game. I yeah, no, the first, first game, game was really good. Solid. First game was really Kept good. Kept that probe alive forever. When you threw that Sonics. Arbiter in there, I wanted to fucking yeah. strangle you, you know? <laughs> that yeah, was man, so man. good. Your Arbiter placement, your Arbiter timing You're like five good. base, like spending every penny. The Very good was play. Brutal. He just lost the tank. You could tell he was, he was shaken up though by the yeah, first game. He was like really nervous, yeah. yeah. Cause he let that shit go. And I felt like usually if you see uh, Marines, he built Marines. I was like, oh, here comes another two pack. And then he stopped Marines. He built two. Yeah. It's like no Terran builds two Marines. Now obviously he just changed his build to command center or dropship or something. I think he was gonna go dropship. But I, at it's, that point I knew it was looked, like he didn't. He's not going two facts. It looked to me like he was actually gonna go one fact expand and use the Marines to buffer shots while he repaired the depot because he had actually a very fast team. But you sniper oh, yeah. that first tank, yeah, and after yeah, that, that happens, nice the tank. Yeah, yeah. when 1015 kills that first tank, it is all downhill from there. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. When, when you kill the first tank, yeah. Yeah. We were like did high five and dancing. My, you didn't see my other game. My other 1015. Oh, no, 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 we didn't see that. No, tank. we didn't see that. That's a good build. That's yeah, a taste of Sartosis. It was so good. And then, <laughs> and then engineered to make her. He fended it off. He defended it. And then he put his. He sieges two tanks like to defend his natural, right? But when Terrans do this, you can just rush your goons and you like shoot across the little ridge there. Yeah. And uh, so he had two tanks sieged like right there in range of goons. So I just ran up with five goons, killed the two tanks, and that was it. Yeah. Yeah. I love doing that. That's a good one. Excellent. Cut ahead here. Right. Well, you got some time off. We're probably gonna go walk or something. Yeah. Got some good video footage. All right. Oh, I'll do a video on that as well, Nick Drizzle. That's in my list of videos to make. So now he's in another match here. He's deeper. This time, this point in time, we we're just allowed to be in here. So this is another PVZ. Again, you get out of this tournament, you have your pro gamer license. This is the, the thing in the way in order to open up all of the pro gaming possibilities. I hated this map, by the way, when I had to compete on this map. It's a very kind of boring, turtly map. 
why this tournament specifically? This is courage. This is what the tournament's function is. <clears throat> How many people made it? It depended. Um, like if there were, I think if there were like eight 64 person brackets, then it was eight people would make it for each of the 64 person brackets. And then one of the issues that, <coughs> I'm sorry, one of the issues was that there started to become more and more pro gamers, right? So they started to limit the number of people that could get in, which made it more and more inaccessible. I don't believe you had to renew the license. No, it was a lifetime thing. Honestly, it was pretty stupid. I, I think it, it's better to have a free market format where you just have teams. They can pick and choose who they want to have and, you know, uh, not make this barrier of entry. But this is really when the government was a lot more involved in the in the process of pro gaming. And, I, you know, it, it, it does seem like when you, have, when you let the government get too involved in things, it, it creates a bureaucracy around it. And that's sort of what this was. He's got it now. Yeah, I think Zerg doesn't have a third. I don't know, yeah. Yeah, it did seem like on this map, PVZ, if you kind of just stayed in the middle and just stopped them from taking a fourth base, everybody can get a third base easily, but the fourth is where it starts to get hard. Computers on, people just standing around, all the adrenaline. Is the documentary team? <laughs> oh, yeah, that was one of the documentary teams following us around. Their documentary never came out. Dude, we were filmed for so many things that just never came out. It was so weird. Yeah, I don't know what happened with their documentary. Um, but yeah, it, there was like a lot of uh, stuff like that happened. I'm glad, I'm glad at least this came out, though. Because it took him like three minutes after that to get his third up. Yeah. Like, okay. To start his Nexus, even. The kid had four base. Oh. There he is. Why, hello there. There he is. So. You want, you want a soda, man? Yeah, can you I, give me a coat for man? You keep, you keep that one. I'll, I'll get the okay, soda. Okay. Wow. Tasteless is buying you <laughs> sodas. That's how good you are. You are in the finals of Courage on your first try. Yes. What do you have to say for yourself, you goddamn go to? I'm proud, man. It's good. You know, I learned a few things that I've already put to good use. I learned some things from the Easter players that probably won me in these matches that Old Nudie wouldn't have won. So it's really cool to, you know, in my first competition to go out there and like win matches and be like, oh yeah, so and so told me to do this and it's good. And I'm doing it and it's winning me matches. So it's really, really cool. All right, you're in the finals. Yeah. First try ever. Yeah. 
I mean, this is 15 years ago. In your first try ever, that's amazing. Are you feeling any pressure right now? A little bit of pressure, man, but uh, not too worried about it. You know, it's just another dude. It's another dude. It could have been this guy. Yeah. You know, if this guy beat me, he would have been in the finals. It was You win it's this. Just, it's just two more games, man. Maybe three. You win this. I mean, people might, you know, call you the best foreigner ever, and it wouldn't be a stretch at all. So basically, he has one more match to win, and he did it. And that's coming up. <laughs> well, I'm serious. It's LC sick to win. Gio, well, I mean, Gio. you could beat them with your fucking toes <laughs> right now. Yeah. All right. Do some bad games. Uh, yeah, man. I haven't spoiled anything, right, Chad. Easy go. chat. Right, Here it is. So this is what we're the moment we're talking about. We're now going to watch and play the next match. In the captain's chair of courage. That's right. White guys taking over Korea right now. Tasteless, tell us what just happened in the game we just observed. Tony lost the first game. Yes, he did. This Terran is sick. This Terran's pretty good. He is a pro gamer level. He is absolutely intelligent. His build order was just out of out of control. So good. <laughs> Tasteless ID is now Group B final. Message him on iCup. <laughs> All right, good luck to him. He does have a good build order on this map. Yeah, though. that's right. He's been using a 10-15 gate. Very strong on Medusa. He's been destroying God, guys. we like love that build, just man. Just off a 10-15 gate early pressure. It's one of the running really themes of this whole video is 10-15 gate. Build. That's right. We patented that build. Absolutely. I know the builds that kill Terrans. So if he wins this, we win this. <laughs> Do we get parole licenses though? Yes. Oh, awesome. Go Noni. All right. Look at the earrings. Oh, yeah, it's before I had my ears right. slightly right gauged. Right now, Noni is going for a 10 Hoop earring gate. tasteless. He's done this every game on Medusa. Protoss vs. Terran today. I think this is his fourth Protoss vs. Terran matchup of this Courage. And it has been serving him very well. It looks like this guy might be going fact port again. Fact port again? That's what he did the first game. It's very strong on this map. Two God, fact people play fact so port differently strongs, two openers back then. On this map, yeah, TVP. Don't, don't command center first. Yeah, command center first, yeah, but very bad here. Really bad on this map. And, uh, you know, he's going to get siege right off. I know this build order very well. I've been practicing it lately. And uh, his siege is going to start same time as his tank as soon as that add-on finishes. And with that uh, placement of the depot at the choke, if we can look at that real quick, wait, wait, that's wait, very wait. hard to bust down with a 10 15 gate. Oh, ah. fucking rain gets me. And now all this Terran has to do to hold this is just be very careful with this repairing. So, again, this is a rush where you get Dragoons out. The, the range finishes so fast. And when you get Dragoons with range, it can be really abusive because this entrance, you can see where the Terran's Wallen is. Um, it's on low ground. So, you know, I mean, in StarCraft 1, you got to remember there's a chance to miss if you fire from low ground onto high ground which mutes the power of most rushes, but not on this map. And by the way, they didn't really use maps like this for years up until this period. So it was like people are having to try to figure out uh, how to hold off these very new uh, rushes that were engineered to basically punish the Terran. This so just won to reiterate, Noni lost the first game. At this this is game time. two. Oh, one well, he didn't win right here? Oh, yeah. Noni actually lost to a two factory build, which is also very good on this map. Uh, okay, when he 10 15 gave. All right, two hits on the tank, two. Okay, it's, it's got four hits left on it. Five. So the idea is I mean, maybe Artos is going to say it, but I'll just give you guys you know, my analysis on the rush here. Um, what you do is you just hit the tank, the tank runs back, you just hammer the depot. The tank comes back up, you shoot the tank again. If SCVs come up, you got to remember, it's only six uh, shots from a Dragoon to kill an SCV. So if you have three Dragoons, you can two-shot an SCV. If it's left now. He's got to be careful. He's got to pull more SCVs if he wants to hold that. To be very careful. If you lose that tank, you're done. Siege mode's almost done. Siege mode should be Oh, my God. He went Vulture next. All right, all right. Three hits left on the tank. Now four hits left on that tank. He gets the tank. That is huge. This guy went vulture next. He probably has another vulture building because that's what goes with this build. And if he does, he's gonna have to lay mines, and the dragons are gonna come in and just destroy him. He's laying the mines. If he can get up here, he can get up oh here. my god, Noni should be able to win this very easily. Just throw a dragoon out in front. No, he doesn't have a zealot. It doesn't even matter though. Mines? 
It's okay. Alright, easy win. No, he's got this. Where, where the rest of his goes? Who knows? You forgot a pile on. Oh, no, he missed a pile. Oh my god. Yeah. Oh, he gets the tank. Alright, GG, get it. out. Go, go right. Out, please, Terry. Yeah, there's this ramp that goes up behind your minerals on this map. So a lot of times when you get in their base at the rush and they send the SCVs, you literally run up this high ground behind their minerals. It's super busted. <coughs> Just gonna wait for the next tank to come out. No, you just killing those weak little SCVs with this powerful dragon army. That's what that Terran gets for doing the same. Oh, it was GG. GG. She's tired. She's tired. That's our killer nerd, man. That is our killer, killer nerd right there. Is our nerd mercenary? <laughs> totally <laughs> sick. Call the way we talk. Logo. We still <laughs> talk like that. I'm not gonna say that. <laughs> So this is it. This is the Damn. final map. This is uh, this is pretty astounding. Final game of courage. Final game. This is all Noni needs to do is win this game. Quick, whisper him to DT drop. <laughs> well, we know what is he gonna do on this map. I don't know his strategy on this map. I think he's just gonna play a standard game. A standard game. I'll be surprised. He should just 10-15 here. It's really good too. Okay, there's Noni. There is Noni. I'm gonna turn off the camera till it gets exciting. Mm. All right, right now Noni is flying across the map with a Reaver. He has gone Reaver, skipped Observer before expansion. Taren went one. All right, here we drop, go. He's gone Goliath Tech. Not drop ship. I mean, not turret. Mm, that was bad. He does have an eBay. He already has an armory spinning. If he can block this very well. Oh wow, it's just barely in the tank range. Goliath is gonna come along. If he sees the Goliath, he'll probably tech really differently. That reach. No, he's going double expand. So down here. And now it's factory add on time. Terran feels pretty here. safe from here. He's probably getting Goliath range right now. Terran at this point is ahead. Yeah, Terran's ahead. But Noni is taking double expansion to catch right back up. It'll be interesting to see if Terran wants to go for three base or a two base timing. He scans and sees there's no other gateways, so he probably knows a double expansion happening. You know, it's yeah. funny is we're like casting this. I mean, we're basically just talking for the camera, but it's like we're, we're before we were ever really casting anything together, we're, I guess we were kind of going over stuff like this. We're probably going to see a. Uh, Macro he game he here, a long here. macro game. Oh, is that a starport he's making? All right, oh, he's, he's making a spot, starport. He's spot the shuttle. Yeah, but that starport is just to get a science facility because he's getting quick upgrades. That means that we are going to see a long macro game, it's most gonna likely. Game. Terran's going to want a three base, go oh, two one oh, timing. Oh, oh, hold that, hold that, hold All right, that, that. this is excellent. Yeah. Spot it. Yep. Okay, here it is. There it is. Oh, oh God, these are like the. God, he's not getting a lot of SCVs with those Five scarabs. kills on that Reaver. Six kills on that Reaver. Picks it up. Goliath range is done. Oh, flanked by the turret. Oh, sup. Shit. I, for I forgot that this was Noni and not just some Protoss. I was getting excited for a moment. All right. Noni's not in too good a position, but Terran is not most likely going to get aggressive yet. I don't know. three pack. He could. He could. He's Second armory going up, up though. I think he's going to expand. Yeah. Attacks right now. It's so wasteful. He's in a very good position. He can't be harassed anymore. See this line that moves up in the monitor? I can't remember why, but for some reason with videos back then, if you were to record another screen, it would make this like black line that would move through. I, I, it's so funny seeing it here now. All right, looks like it's going to be a You'll see it come up from time to time. Yeah, this kind of black okay, ripple that okay. moves up. Five arbiters now. It's going to be six. All right. Seven. Right now, Noni is up to how many arbiters? Five, you said? Five arbiters. This one, six arbiters. Terran has two or three science vessels, EMP. Three, two is just about done. It's So this is kind of, uh, this is in the era where really arbiters were at their peak. I mean, people, you could go carrier. You can always go carrier. But um, it was not a period of time where people went for um, speed shuttle or Templar. That's very modern. 
or, or default always going Reaver. Like when you see Reaver used in that uh, attack earlier, it was always used to harass. Where Reaver now is used to harass and also to win fights. Um, so games always climax into like, can you get the stasises off on the right units, the right amount, take a fight, or do you get a recall off and go into their base? Which it's a very dated way to play now. It does come up from time to time. It seems like it's kind of making a swing back in PvT, but um, this was like the way the game was played back then. It is done, and now he's moving. This is his attack on 3 2. He's on three bases, got a ton of factories. If he spreads well, Noni is in a lot of trouble because he is he has to rely on stasis here. Terran army is ridiculously well upgraded. Shit, he should not have this together. This is just like Yeah, he's gotta be very careful here. If he gets EMP'd well, Terran's gonna scan and try to find it. He's gotta be really careful, man, if this could spot. So everything Artosa said is true. It, this is one of the problems with playing like this, is it kind of both players end up in sort of a weird limited situation. Thank you for the sub, easy peasy lemon squeezy. Appreciate it. Um if the Terran can EMP the Arbiters, the Protoss is fucked. But if the Protoss can just EMP like a few groups of tanks and then get a good engage, the Terran's fucked. Uh, Terran has the upper hand right now if he just executes his push correctly. He might go for a recall, but that would be really bad here. Oh man, he does not want to recall. I don't know, but the thing is, nobody seems to, to an extent, caught up. Terran, Terran should have pushed well, right, at, right at 3 2. I think Terran right now, probably just adding a few factories. He's got his 3-2, he's got the last upgrade going. Yeah, see, this is what you do when you max out with full upgrades, Terran. You have to add a ton of factories, because if you can just keep on reinforcing with vultures, Protoss is so dead. He has to get the good uh, stasis on. Man, this is really dangerous. It's everything you're risking. Those live guys? Me and Artosis talking lasting. in the background, no, guys. He is a pro gamer. I'm observing. Oh, I He'll be What's the, the first. 3-2. Three, three, two. Two. One, one here. This is crazy. Taryn is taking his sweet time. And Taryn's really taking his time. I actually yeah. questioned this a little bit, but then again, I would have expected Taryn to push out a little bit like here. Yeah, it's no, just... No one's in position. I think he's just, you know, he has to feel pretty good right now. If he doesn't make a mistake, uh, has theoretically, to he should probably win if he goes now. Um, so... Oh, dude, no has got the extra gateways. I didn't see that. That's good. Uh, he's got one forge going, I think. Oh, Where's he? Two forge. I forgot the forge. He has two forge. forges, but only one's up. Oh. Two going. Only. One, 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 one. I think looking at this just real quick here, it seems like he has way more dragoons than they normally make. I remember also having this problem. I feel like maybe this idea hadn't been fleshed out as much. When you go Arbiters now, you get more zealots. I'm just I'm just noticing that there's, I feel like almost two or three control groups of dragoons here. Turns pushing, turns pushing. Here it is. All right, he's he just going to be careful here. Oh, beautiful stasis. So he stasis is the vessels. Sometimes you have to stasis the vessels. If you can get anything underneath, it's good. But that means they don't have... Uh, they have to rely on scan. <laughs> really commentating voices now. Those arbs are going to be picked He might up. just wait and get more gates. Noni uh, has taken top right. Noni oh, has dude, he's just, just right. He might just go in here and freeze all this shit. Look at this. He's, he's got an... Oh, if you freeze that clump, that's so good. He's... He's gonna space out the freezing, I, 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 I guess. Why doesn't he fight? Because he needs to freeze him. I don't think he wants to fight yet. I think Noni's buying time to get his other expansions online. Yeah, yeah. He's got the expansion online. He wants them to kick in. Oh, oh my okay, god, go, that's go, go, a go. lot of stasis. That's, that's really good. I think he's gonna attack now. Here goes, here goes, wow. here goes, here goes, here goes. He's gotta be careful that a lot of those stasis are blocking other units. This might be suicide. He's going in a line. I think, I think he's going in a fucking line. Oh man. He, he is needs going to back in line. off. Shit. This is not good. This is not, not well good. Not good. Not good. He's probably he's probably macroing. He's, he's very doing. goon heavy. Oh, oh man, that was bad. Oh. He's expanding down here. He could he could reproduce this. This Terran is playing like Flash. It's like <laughs> moved out a little bit slower, but uh, he emp would the uh, Templars. He doesn't have Storm. I think the push right now will kill him. Yeah, this I, he used up all his stasis, so. At this point, Noni has to play, run around your army and make you chase me toss. It's gonna be all right. This is really what are you bad. saying it's gonna be all right. <laughs> this is, I think this is over, man. Yeah, I think Noni's dead. All right, all right, all right. All right. Turn's gonna push. Protoss needs. Protoss wants to flank, but these upgrades are ridiculous. Does he have three army on those mech? And yeah. three, three, and three, three. Upgraded. It's ridiculous. Noni's trying to go around. That is the Terran late game right there. I think that's, I think this is, I think this is GG. What you're watching from Terran is the most powerful thing in the game. Fully upgraded, max mech. 
Yeah, there's nothing no one he can do. He's gonna have to try again next time. There's just nothing he yeah. can do. He's he's in trouble right now. This guy just needs to keep on top of his rallies, on top of his scans. That's well, it. This is the issue. Is the stasis are good, but he doesn't yeah, have anything to fight with. Nothing to kill the other unit. Looking at the failed attack early, I really think it goes down to there was way too many dragoons. You need to have mostly zealots to kind of run in, soak up tank shots, mines, and eventually get on top of the Terran army. But I think it was just too dragoon heavy. It's he he also probably in the, not in the attack we just saw but the one that was uh, earlier on where he lost most of his army probably didn't need to attack in there it's probably better to make the terran work a little bit more and move into the middle of the map uh, obviously easier said than done though uh, e easier said than done i think that's it terran didn't expand again what do i mean terran yeah Aaron? He can start expanding now, but uh, yeah. it's just what Maybe he's got is so actually, powerful, and right now he probably has about 3k. Yeah, they both should have, well, Terran should have a lot of fucking money. Yeah. Terran should be rich. Terran should be like Donald Trump right now. Yeah, basically. They have so much income. <laughs> and here these stasis go, so the huge army is coming right back. He's trying to hold on. Yeah, 2009 Trump oh, joke. Terran splits up his push. Yeah. That is it. Terran is attacking the top right bases now. And these upgrades are just too much to handle. He upgrades the vessels. That is... That he shouldn't is, have stasis so early. That is how you play TVP on calls. Young Tasis is right. Now we're just watching our friend get murdered. It was all that bad attack. Yeah, it really was. Well, the Reaver opening really got him far behind. Terran had to feel very good after that. He should have had two Zealots in there, not a Dragoon. Dragoon sucks. Yeah, true. Actually, he wasted his one Zealot when he was attacking the wall. And now Noni is going to be down bases. And you and just can't it. kill this Terran death blob. Yeah, that's that's it, man. You know when he's just waiting this out and he's gonna punch in GG. Yeah. It's over. This Terran was very good. Terran was very, very good. No one is still going to try to wait. Yes, Chad, this is me and Artosis. I'm, I'm observing the game. Yeah. I know people are just now joining in for this. Slammed. To be honest, he probably knows he's lost. He's probably just trying so hard. Yeah. Hasn't quite hit him yet. What up, Grace and Noni and Donald? Uh, if you can find a unit. <laughs> there, are, uh, there are no there are units, no units on the map. <laughs> It's got just probes. Normally that's enough, but 3-3 three, three Terran can take care of that. I'm impression for us with a lot of money. 3-2 Terran, man. Yeah. There's all those bad stasis, man. Oh, no, he's taking the bottom right like that. Oh my god, no pylon there. Trying to throw up gates there. Well, Terran doesn't really have much Doesn't money. matter, he's doesn't got banked. That sucks, man. It does suck. He's gonna type GG. Yeah, this whole day, it's an incredible up, journey. We didn't, you know, we pull a Jello Pud. <laughs> Jello Pud <laughs> reference back then too. <laughs> and GG. <laughs> GG. <laughs> Sad moment, man. We did not know. I mean, you know, it, it, we want obviously Noni or anybody who plays Encourage to win, but we don't expect it, right? So I mean, this was a crazy day where it's like he was literally one game away from taking it. So it kind of started out, if you you know look back at the start of the video, it's a sort of fun, relaxed hangout while we're doing something cool in Seoul, um, kind of living out our dreams uh, into like, oh my God, he might actually do it. History might be made. And he loses in that last game to a um, probably premature stasis, kind of bungled the attack. Uh, I think he probably would have won that had he just kind of waited, let fished the Terran out. Terran actually has to push. Right. If they don't attack, you do just take the whole map and make like, you know, 10 gateways at each main base. And uh, you're kind of uh, immune to being killed at that point in time. But 
Uh, we even see it now in ASLs where people will kind of attack into the Terran when the Terran hasn't really earned um, the threat yet. You know, is not out on the map, is not, you know, you, you know, you can always try to counterattack into their base too when they push far out enough, but it seems like Noni kind of had all the pieces of the puzzle there, but he pulled the trigger before it was time. Noni, your first try, you lost one, two in the finals to an excellent Terran player. He was really good. What do you have to say? I could have won. <laughs> uh, do you have any comments on the attack move into the stasis walled army? Uh, I thought I saw his whole army. I thought he had more stuff up on his high ground and not out in that little choke. Yeah. So I thought I was going to pick off a couple tanks and then run back. And he had way more stuff, like, right there. Yeah. I was like, what is all that stuff doing right there? Cool. And, uh... There was nothing I could do. My stuff was too clumped up and I lost it all, so I couldn't even get a second a second thing going. But I had like 700 energy in my Arbiters. Oh, like I had so much Arbiter casting to do. Like, I could've won that game. <laughs> yeah, you could've. That's all right, because after something like that, you're here another month. Yeah. I think you won't lose yeah, the game. Yeah. It's um. Yeah, he, Noni didn't stay on Korea for too long. He wasn't happy with the uh, the team house setup. Looking back at it, like, a lot of these pro gaming team houses, it was kind of a one-size-fit-all. Uh, I meant to mention this earlier, but I, we're almost out of, out of video, um, so I'm just going to mention it now. But I remember him complaining that they didn't let him get enough sleep. I, I Korea at that time, and I feel like even now, they don't value sleep as much as some other cultures. And he also, Noni was a runner. If, if he was able to run for about an hour a day, it would improve his mood overall. But they weren't really giving him enough time to exercise either. So um, a lot of those team houses, despite their whole function being to create an environment that makes the best players, a lot of times it wasn't actually that good. It was kind of this grind set mindset. Um, and I know that Noni was frustrated with that at the time. One mistake. It's like, One mistake. I can go like back and redo that, that tactic and uh, win that game. And then I don't have to come back here in a month and play 100 more games. Yeah, that's, well, I, I think you're probably going to win it pretty easily next month. What do you think? I think so, man. You know, I predicted one or two tries. And uh, obviously, Toast it shows that, uh, you know, I wasn't just being cocky or whatever. Yeah. I can come in and win courage. So Sorry. next time. Well, I'll just good. play a little more perfect. <laughs> yeah. Excellent try. Yeah, man. You are a hero to white people all over the world. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you so much for joining me for that. That's quite the way to end the video. Um, if you like this kind of content, please be sure to yeah. like and subscribe. Uh, oops, my video is playing again. I had to pause it. Uh, like and subscribe um, so I can get more content like this out there. Uh, also... I'm getting better with presenting the, the merch now. See? Look at that 1A2A3A a shirt. Or you got a GG shirt. You can get this at tastelessthreads.com. Great stuff. StarCraft related, RTS related, gaming esports related stuff. Um, check that out. I think you'll find something that you will like there. Uh, thank you for joining me, and I hope to see you in a future video. Bye-bye.